Hello, I'm Phil Manson, and this is Morning Prayer. If you look closely at Psalm 130, you'll notice that it is divided into four couplets, or stanzas of two verses each. We dealt with the first stanza yesterday, the psalmist asking that the Lord hear his voice as he cries to him from the depths. The second stanza, verses 3 and 4, says, If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. We all have a record, a rap sheet. Job acknowledges that God is omnipresent, and he sees all of his sins and keeps a record, a tally of them. Deuteronomy tells us that our sins are filed away in a divine storage vault. Hosea says, The guilt of Ephraim, that is Israel, is stored up. His sins are kept on record. No wonder the psalmist cried out to the Lord from the depths for mercy. If God remembers my unconfessed sins, who can stand before him in judgment? When I walk the neighborhood behind our house, there's a bumper sticker on a car in a driveway along my route that says, I love big mutts. Obviously, a, a dog lover. If the psalmist had a bumper sticker on the back of his cart, it might say, I love big butts, spelled B-U-T-S. He confesses, if you, Lord, kept the record of sin, Lord, who could stand? But, my Scottish theology and church history professor T. Crichton Mitchell called this the blessed but. It is the but of a great reversal, a shift in direction, a retrieval from the deep. I was sinking, but now I'm standing. I was dead, but now I'm alive. With unconfessed sin, who could stand? We'd all collapse, but with you there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence, serve you, that is, stand and worship. God does not desire our destruction, but our repentance. Confession and forgiveness prompts an immediate erasure and deletion of our sin. The vault is emptied. The record burned or buried. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. My sins, they were many, but his mercy is more. Let's pray together. So, Father, we approach you this morning with the reverence that is due to your great name. You are the compassionate and gracious God. You are slow to anger. You are abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet, Lord, you will not leave the guilty unpunished. You demonstrated your own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, your son Jesus Christ, died for us. And so this morning, in view of such a wide and deep and gracious mercy, we offer our bodies as living sacrifices to the daily worship of your great name. Father, for those who've never tasted or perhaps need to taste once again the sweetness of your forgiving grace, may we in good faith and godly sorrow cry out to you from the depths and give birth to the repentance and the confession that leads to salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and the cleansing from a guilty conscience 
that we may serve and worship you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.